So I hope you guys can hear me. Um, it's going to be a different type of video. Um, I'm going to sit in here and tell you about, oh, sorry, there's no videos. Uh, you know, busy, whatever. But it's, it's, I've been busy, and it's going to be like that for the foreseeable future. Um, it's not, you know, be kind of cool to do kind of like a vlog vlog style thing you know um just kind of sit here and talk no nerd stuff just um some real life shit have a cigar i'm, uh, I'm gonna smoke the uh perdomo 10th anniversary champagne so for you guys are in that and I'm gonna be sipping on mccallum 12 year so it's <sighs> fine scotch um I guess first and foremost, I guess allow me to introduce myself. You know, if you've been following the channel, you know me as the Poker Trooper. And that's just kind of my, my my persona on here, you know. It's my really good. Um, you know, but that's not me. You know, and excuse the sound if there's anything I got the wind chime up here and neighbor's dog seem to be going crazy right now I don't know what the hell's going on because everybody's kind of amped up with uh, this hurricane coming in um, but I guess I kind of just wanted to do this just to kind of get something out I haven't done anything in forever um, you know Here. We're all waiting for this hurricane to come in. The winds are picking up. That's nice. Anyways, back to what I was saying. Just allow me to introduce myself properly. For those who have followed the channel long enough or don't know me in real life, you know, you only know me to this channel. My name is Roman. Um, you know, I have two dogs, a wife, a kid, baby on the way. And thought I guess I thought I'd shoot this video just to kind of more for myself. Um, I don't even know if I'm gonna post it or not. But um, you know, one thing found myself in a situation I thought I never would. And it's not, it's not even like a bad situation, you know? Um, but something that's always been important to me was mental health. You know? Especially because in the past, um, we've had family members that struggled with it, you know? myself, my wife, we've known, I'm sure you too, you've known someone who struggled with it. And recently I've been struggling with it too, you know, like I said, I'm not here to boohoo about, oh, there's no videos coming out because of my schedule, whatever. Plain and simple, I've been too damn busy at work. I'm working like six days a week, you know, 50, 60 hours more sometimes. Um, I mean, I'm lucky enough I have a boss that truly understands right now that I'm just having this major burnout at work, you know. I need a break, so he's helping me out with that. Thank you, man. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm kind of all over the place, man. This is really... It's off the cuff. But, um, yeah, I didn't think I was going to be that type of person, you know. I thought I was stronger than what I, I what I'm feeling, I guess. And, um, you know, this last couple weeks I've been really struggling with anxiety, I think bordering on depression, and um, you know it's scary, dude. It's a scary feeling. So, 
I don't know, I guess I'm kind of doing this video in case there's anybody else out there that's kind of struggling with that thought of just being burnt out, being stressed. You know, it's funny enough, I've been thinking all day how to do this video and I came up with some great stuff. And um, <laughs> Right now I'm just drawing a total blank on everything I was thinking of and, and all the points I wanted to make. But... You know, it, it's it's hard. It's, it's a real struggle, you know. And like I said, I never found, I never thought I'd find myself in a situation where I would feel like I need help. You know, and it's and like it's so funny saying that because it's not even like as severe as some people I've known. Um, but I guess I can always say I've always been a big proponent of of mental health, especially men's mental health. So. You know it's, it's it's really hard because like I said we've all we've all struggled with with mental health at one point of our lives sometimes we don't always make it out the other end um, case in point was my brother-in-law um, you know had everything going, dude. He had a wife, he had a job, he had a home. And he was just struggling with something. And in the end, he decided it was too much for him. He ended up taking his own life. Um prior to that one of his best friends had actually done the same and it's a scary thought man I myself I've I haven't thought about it you know that's not that's not me um, luckily I have a good I guess, support team around me I have my wife my parents my siblings they've all dealt with the same issues so it's kind of like it's nice to know that there's people back there backing me up. But I mean, it's a hard thing to deal with. Especially in this, in this country, you know. Um, you know, I'm not about to start preaching to you guys, but the other day my sister sent me this, um, I guess it's like this this church series um you know like they did a, they did a series of, of four sermons you know one every week and the topic was anxious for nothing because i just been having the worst anxiety attacks lately to the point where it's like i can't sleep um and so the series was called Anxious for Nothing. And they were saying between 1940s and now, anxiety has risen like 200% in the American population. People now suffer more from anxiety than people who lived through World War II, through the Great Depression, through the First World War, Spanish flu, things like that, you know? And it's hard, dude, because we don't, you would think nowadays we would have, life would be easier. And for whatever reason, it's, it's seeming like it's not, you know, so, um, like I said, I've been a big proponent of, of men's mental health because fortunately in this country, um, men are three times more likely to commit suicide than women. And the statistics are even higher um, for veterans, which is even worse, you know. Just guys and girls go overseas, risk their lives come back and not receive the help they need and decide that it's it's not worth it anymore um it's 
drawing a blank now. I guess my main takeaway is you need to reach out, talk to somebody, you know, because it's not right to go through all this alone, you know. For myself, it's been a lot of prayer, you know, and I know not everybody's a praying type, not everybody's religious or or has faith like that but you know it's up to you but for me it's it's been prayer and it's been reaching out to people around me it's really helped um but sometimes it just might be just hearing a good word man i stumbled across this this one gentleman's youtube page and like I said, I've been struggling with this for like the last couple weeks. And he said something that really it really it really hit it home. Um because he put it in a way that I can understand. And the channel is called Dry Creek Wrangler School. It's it's funny because it's it's actually it's like a horse channel, right? This this guy has a school. Where he teaches about horses and, and and saddles and things. The guys, I mean, if you can just picture Sam Elliott's character from The Big Lebowski, you know, hey, dude, that guy, right? That's basically him. He's just this old, grizzled cowboy. And his name's the, the guy's name is Dwayne. He's, he's a really awesome guy. Like, you need, really need to go check him out. Um, but he put something, he said something, and it really put everything in perspective for me. And I want to pass this on because I think people really need to hear these words. So, before, before I get into it, I, get, I guess give a little background, but... <clears throat> And it's probably going to give away what what the whole thing is, right? So back like 20, 2011, 2012, I worked for this knife company. You know, and in combat knives, right? You know, this is called a Super Commander. If you're really interested in the brand, you can look it up. I'm not going to give out the name. S Super Commander. It's a big thing, you know, when I quit, I made sure I bought... One of the last ones that I worked on, we just happened to be working on these at the time. And I asked the boss, let me let me buy one. And he, you know, bought it. Then they went ahead and put that special decal on the back for me. Um, you know, had a good had a good experience there. You know, and just from there, since working there, that's kind of where I got my love of knives, you know. I've got Everything from, you know, Benchmades. You know, I love my Benchmades. I've got Spider Co's. Um, all the way up to, you know, Chris Reeve Knife Sabenzas. I love these things, right? And so I have that history of it. But what he said was, To get a good blade, it's not just made like that. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm going to paraphrase. I can't remember exactly. If you really want to hear the real, the real things, I, I really advise you to go check out his videos. But he says we're like, we're like the steel. And to make a good blade, it has to be tempered through the heat. So you put it in the fire. You put it through the fire. You melt that steel down, you get it hot, and that's us, man. We're like we're like pieces of steel, and we we think we're strong, and nothing can break us, you know, guys. You know, speaking specifically to you, men. Um, I mean, women too. You guys, 
guys, girls, everything in between, you know, who cares, but especially at younger ages, we feel like we're, we're unstoppable, we're unbreakable. And then something happens in our lives and it feels like we're just thrown in the fire. And it's uncomfortable and it's hot. And next thing you know, we're coming out of the fire and we think we're good, right? Well, I mean, compared to these things, it's not the same process, but you know, back in the day, what was the next step? You end up on the anvil and get hammered and life hammers you. Right when you think that you're getting out of it, life hammers you and pounds you and breaks you down until you feel like you're reached your limit and then you just get doused and you're quenched and you just feel just this this peace okay I made it through but the process doesn't end there you know um, that doesn't make a good knife what happens next it gets thrown back in the fire and That's how we are, you know? We get put in the fire and we're, we're melted down and we're hot and we get broken down and then we're brought out and then life pounds on us and pounds on us and pounds on us, be it a breakup or you lose your job, you lose a loved one, you know? Um, and then you get a little bit of peace, you get that quenching, you know? The heat gets turned out, you, you feel fresh, you feel good. But when you least expect it, you end up right back in that fire. You start getting tempered again. And I mean, that hit me so hard when he said that, you know. You know, and only through, through persevering and making it through, like, that's how you become a blade for the ages. You know, you, you go from a chunk of steel to an Excalibur to, you know, whatever, whatever your legendary sword might be or your fucking Rambo knife, whatever you think it is. But the thing is, yes, pieces, a knife goes through that on its own, you know. No, not necessarily. I mean, let's break it down. I mean, if you if you want to really say, my main, my main point being is we have to do this, but we don't have to do it alone. You got to get a support group around you, you know. And your support group can be your spouse, your parents, your siblings, you know, co-workers. Um, medical professional, you get a therapist, get a psychologist. You know, there's no shame in that. And I mean, that's just kind of how it is. You know, you're the steel, and, and you got to find the things that support you. That even though you're going through all this stuff, they're still there. The, you know, blacksmith doesn't hold on to the steel with his bare hand. You know, he's. He's got the tongs, he's got the hammer, he's got the gloves, the apron, all that stuff, you know. The steel supported by the anvil, and that's how we have to be. We have to be supported by something, by somebody, be it church or a loved one or, or whatever you feel like you need, you know. But do it, you know, because there's no reason to have to go through it alone. Now I'm not going to lie, I feel a little pompous sitting here, puffing away on the cigar, trying to preach to you guys about mental health when I'm going through it myself, you know. Like I said, I might not post this. This is kind of, I guess, more therapy for myself. Um, but I mean, it's true because you don't want to take the easy way out, you know. Suicide is an, it's an epidemic in this country. It happens all too, too often. And usually it's, it's, it's to the best people. 
you know, my brother-in-law, I miss and love that guy, you know. Um, he didn't have kids, but, but he would have been a great dad. And as much as I miss him, I have to admit, like, I, I fucking hate him, you know. Because instead of finding help, seeking help, he thought what he, he did what he thought was the best. Without thinking about everyone around him, his wife, my wife, his other siblings, his mom. just seeing how much pain they all went through that they still go through every day you know that's a pain I, I wouldn't I would never want to inflict on anybody and I mean a part of me really hates them for doing that But um, in a weird sense, I kind of understand, you know, because sometimes life gets so hard. <sighs> you feel like the whole weight of the world is crushing you. You know, like I said, I, I have a crazy work schedule, you know. We're sh short-staffed. So between myself and the manager, you know, we're just picking up as much slack as possible. He has his responsibilities. He has to do to keep the warehouse open. And I basically take care of the entire front end of that, you know? I gotta make sure my drivers are in and out on time. I gotta make sure, you know, the product is ready, packaged, you know, ready to go on time. You know, there's, there's set cutoff times throughout the entire day and I have to make sure that you know, my people grabbing the products, they're they're grabbing the right ones. That when it's getting wrapped up, it's getting wrapped up correctly. If it's gotta get transferred to one of our other branches, it's going in the right direction. You know, it's like I have like twenty people under me. And that seems like a small number, you know. That's all your fingers and your toes. Seems like a small number. But and the funny thing is even smaller because some like half the time like half the people are calling out nobody wants to work we have people that show up to work or come in for an interview get offered the position just don't show up you know okay first job is monday your first day is on monday and they're not, they're not there you know and so we're stuck picking up all that slack and i got people you know working under me that they're they're getting tired of it too went out you know they're getting tired of it too you know they're they're the hard workers they're the people that show up day in day out they need they need to get their their bills paid you know you know and you know we're I'm there every every day you know from like six sometimes earlier to like almost closing sometimes, you know? And it's easy to say, well, you know, it's not your business. Don't worry about it. You're working for a company that doesn't give a shit about you or replace you if you were to drop dead right there. And I know that. Not stupid. I know that. Growing up in, you know, Mexican culture, growing up in this country, you have to be a man, you know. Men don't quit. You need to be up at 3, 4 in the morning to go find work, to go go to work 
you need to be up. You're sick, you're hungover, you lost somebody, if you're hurt, it doesn't matter. You get up and you do it. That's what it means to be a man. And um, you know, if something's wrong, you you ball, you push it down. You push it down. You go to work, and you show up on time, and you're there, and you bust your ass. And I think that's a way of thinking that we have to change. You know. That thinking stemmed from a time of, of in my opinion, that stemmed like from a time of war, you know. Men went off to war and the women had to stay back and work. And when you're overseas, you don't have days off. You don't, you don't call in sick. You suit up, you boot up, and you're out. If you get scared or, or something, you fucking, you push it down. And just, that ethic came back. And that's the ethic we've pushed on, on generation upon generation, despite the fact that if there's something wrong with you, we don't care. You know? Um, and I think I finally hit that point where it's like you reach a point where you just burn out. You try and you try. And you're there every day without a break, you know. And then you have to come home. And you can't just come home and just relax, you know. If you're a single guy, maybe. Oh, you know, I'm going to stay home, have a beer, relax, you know. You know, if you're a dad or a mom, just because you clock out at work doesn't mean you come home and you're clocked out. You still have to, you know, put in your time with your family. You know, I come home, my wife's been at home with, with the baby all day. She's pregnant. She's exhausted. I still have to come home and be a dad, you know. And I'm, I'm ashamed to admit it, you know, the last couple weeks I haven't been able to do that. You know, as hard as it's been on me, mentally, physically, my poor wife has just been picking up that slack. And I feel ashamed to admit that, you know, and I've... Makes you feel bad. Makes you feel less, less of a man, less of a dad. You know. Because a dad, that's your job. You get up, you go to work, you come home and you spend time with your family and you do what needs to be done. But you don't take into account that sometimes life just wears you down. You know, and it's not, it's not all at once, you know, it's, it's gradual. It's like a river smoothing a stone, you know. You might start life as, as this hard piece of granite, dude, jagged and cut and rough and, but you spend enough time in that river called life and you can't, you start losing edges. You start losing corners. Next thing you know, you're smoothed down to a smooth round ball, just flowing with life. You know, and, and just And that's what they tell you. That's what it is to be a man. But I've come to a conclusion that that's, that's not what it is, you know. Sure, you can be manly, you know. You can have a manly job. Police officer, firefighter, doctor. I, I, guess, I guess doctor's a manly job, you know. Construction worker, you know, whatever the hell you want to say. You can have a manly job. You can go to the gym 20 times a fucking day. Work out, get cut, be, be all buff, you know?
but to be a man guess what I'm thinking it's going to sound contrary to everything I've been saying but when times get hard you have to man up and you have to be strong and admit that you're weak or you're having a moment of weakness You know, um, you have to reach out to somebody. Because no one should have to go through this alone. Man, woman, whatever, again, who cares? You have to man up and be strong enough to admit that you're having a moment of weakness. Be that depression, anxiety, Thoughts of self-harm, an addiction of some sort. You have to be able to realize that you're having an issue and seek that help. Reach out to somebody. You know, there's there's a suicide hotline. I'll post the, the number at the end of the video. You know. Um, but you don't have to go through this alone. Talk to somebody, your spouse, your siblings, your friends, you know, someone in the church or, you know, kids, your teacher, counselor. Go, if you feel like you need it, go get medical, like professional help. There's no shame in that. That's why we have them. So these people spend years going to school for it, you know. Seek that help. Don't let it eat you up. Because at the end of the day, no one gives a fuck about you except you. you're the breadwinner in your house you have to make sure you're healthy you know physically and mentally you know my situation I'm the breadwinner here I'm the one that goes to work I have to make sure that I'm good you know doesn't mean I expect to come home and you know my wife haven't made dinner big ass steak and potato with you know or, or, or you know if we're doing something I get the biggest portion you know that's that's an antiqu that's antiquated thinking you know but you have to be the one to take care of yourself because no one's gonna do it you're not a kid anymore mom and dad aren't gonna be there forever you know um, I'm also keeping an eye on the sky. We got a hurricane coming in. Um, but you gotta take care of yourself, guys. You know, your mental health is, is just as important as your physical health. If you're sick, you'll get over that. You know, if you have a cold, you'll get over it. The flu or whatever the hell. If you break an arm, you know legs, a finger, whatever the hell it is, you get over, you you heal, your bones will heal, you know, that fever will break, Those that, that, that sinus issue you have will go away for a while, you know, whatever, your allergies will dissipate, but you have to take care of your mental health as well, you know, I guess you have to think another hurricane. I guess you have to find your eye of the storm, you know? 
Everything around you seems like it's falling apart. The wind's blowing, the rain's falling, the thunder's crap, clapping, not crapping, but clapping. You know, lightning strikes. The whole world seems like it's going one way and then it turns the other way. But then you find your center. And you say your eye your storm. And it's that, that calm. And it's just that little bit of peace that you have. Find something that brings you peace, you know. Might be a cigar, you know. Might be a good drink. Could be anything. Maybe that's not you. Another thing I like to do. I'm a nerd. I love Pokemon cards. I love building Gunpla. Now, I haven't had enough time for that. I miss building Gunpla. I haven't built one in like over a year almost, but... But I mean, you make time. You're busy at work. You're 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 you know killing yourself doing 50, 60, 70 hours, depending on your profession or depending on what's going on. Every week, you know, you come home and you gotta deal with with dishes and cooking dinner and your kids. They have homework. They have projects due. Something's wrong with the car. You have to get that fixed. You know. After a while, just piles up like a pile of dirty dishes you know you see it i'll deal with it later Just add another plate on top of the pile you have to take time to take care of yourself so it could be a smoke it could be an hour of just sitting there with the lights down and some soft music on you need to do it just take care of yourself you know I think that's what it means to be a man you have to be strong but acknowledge when you need help There's no such thing as a one-man army. Everybody had their their backup. You know, Batman had Robin. Spartans, there's 300 of them. You know, they all cover each other's backs. Power Rangers were a team. Ninja Turtles were a team. You know, there's no such thing as a one-man army, except Superman. But we're not Superman. Can wear that shirt all you want. You're not Superman. Eventually, eventually he lost too. Um, but yeah, guys. I mean, like I said, I think this video is more for me. Just to kind of clear my head up a little bit, I guess. Um, I do have some stuff planned. I bought the new. Uh, Obsidian Flames Charmander ETB box. I do plan on opening that. It's open. I just have to open the pack. So I'll probably do that at some point. But um, yeah, guys, I mean, take care of yourselves. So at the end of the day, I want to see each and every one of you back here, you know, enjoying our content. If you feel like you need help, reach out, call somebody, talk to someone. Like I said, I'll, I'll post the uh, suicide crisis hotline at the end of this video. Because no one should have to do this alone. Um, yeah, and just uh, let me know what you guys think about this type of video. You know, kind of a vlog style, I guess. It doesn't have to always be this he this heavy, you know, subject. Um, maybe it's the catch up. You know, hey, I'm out for a walk. Let's, let's have a walk and talk, or you know, whatever it is. You know, there's a bunch of stuff coming up right now. Um, Barb and Hyrule is a thing. Um, what else? I just seen a great movie. I guess I can do a review on that. It's called The Heart of They Fall. 
Jonathan Majors, Idris Elba, Ving Rhames, Regina King, Zazie Betts, I think that's who's her name. Great movie. Highly recommend it. A plus. Uh, five out of five stars. Go check it out. Um, but yeah, let me know what you guys think. Let me know what you guys think. If you like these kind of vlog style videos, maybe I can do more on some random other shit that pops into my mind or whatever. Um, but yeah, guys. I love you guys. Like I said, I want to I want to see you guys back here. Um, you know, more stuff's on the way because at the end of the day, you got to take care of yourself. Like I said, you know, when I started this channel, I wasn't saying out to be the next Mr. Beast or Logan Paul or fucking Shane Dawson or anything, you know. I had a pandemic, called up one of my best friends and I said, let's start a podcast for fun. We'll record and we'll post and, you know, cool, fuck it, whatever, you know. So, so I'll see you guys next time. Be safe. Take care of each other. Take care of yourselves, you know. Like I said, Storm Hillary is supposed to be here anytime soon, you know. Heaven's supposed to open up and the deluge is coming back, so... Hope you guys are doing safe. Um, you know, well, support Maui. Hawaii's burnt down. Those people need our help. So if you can send your prayers or donations or whatever you can, do it. But uh, yeah, guys, I'm not gonna give my regular close out to this. Like I said, go check out uh, that guy Dwayne's channel it's fucking cool it's helped me out a bunch and uh yeah fam take care of yourselves